today on Metaphysical Mississippi. We have Hadley Thorne and Morgana Toddler. They are the wise women of weird. That is the Weird Realities Network. We'll be discussing metaphysical women in history. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Metaphysical Mississippi. I'm your host, Emily, and we have Krista, and today we have Morgana Calder and Hadley Thorne, and we will be discussing metaphysical women in history and get to know Morgana a little better. Yeah. Hello, ladies. How are y'all doing today? <laughs> doing very well. Thank you. It's good to be back. I yes. know. Yeah. Hadley, we've had you on before um, when we were talking about weird realities and your partner in crime with a lot of these um, projects that you do on there it has been Morgana and we're so excited to have her today with us to discuss uh, metaphysics and women in history that you know those women who have influenced us and I, I have so much fun watching all the things that y'all do on Weird Reality Network. Morgana, I want to hear a little bit about you and your journey into metaphysics and what has led you to what you're doing now. And you can share, you don't have to share too much about your <laughs> private, you know, life in the real world, but just, you know. Yes, yes. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks so much for watching us. We do appreciate it. Uh, my name is Morgana Calder. Um, I've lived in Mississippi most of my life. I started out in Yazoo City. I was there and then ended up on the coast. Um, I grew up in a, a little bit of a strange environment. My mother was raised Pentecostal. And my father, for lack of a better word, was a spiritualist. Uh, to quote him, uh, religion is not logical, but Mother Nature shows me every day what she can give and take from us. So on the one side, you know, we were in church every Sunday, but then, you know, I had my dad on the other side of that saying, no, you take what talks to you and you let everything else go. So that's pretty much um, where I started at. You know, I can remember from my youngest age, him encouraging me to think for myself. Uh, we had a very small library, you know, but we did have a bona fide witch that cursed the town. So they did have a little bit, you know, that you could read into when I was younger. But um, when I was 16, I moved to Virginia Beach for a couple of years. And that really made a difference in what I had available was amazing. Uh, my best friend's mom was Wiccan when I was growing up. So I had a little bit of that, you know, uh, my tarot cards were read for the first time when I was like 12. I would never tell my mother that because she'd probably still have a heart attack today. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and I mean, I consider myself uh, as more of a kitchen witch. Um, you know, I'm an eclectic pagan. Uh, my matrons are the Morrigan and Freya. Um, but I am just wide open as far as what people believe, because what's true to me does not speak to someone else. So, you know, it's a, I believe live and let live, you know, I will okay. never insult someone else's beliefs because that's what's true for them. Um, I love that I've got people from all different walks with different beliefs. That's what makes life interesting. So mm -hmm. I will forever be on a search and I don't know that I'll ever complete that search, which I think is fantastic. I oh, love that. Yeah. I love that. And and really, like I've I've grown to to not only accept the mystery, but love and appreciate the mystery. It used to frustrate me. I wanted to know the answers. I wanted to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, That's what's it. truth? I don't. I, 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 I have a question. What's the difference in a searcher and a seeker? I mean, I think it's pretty much about the same. Yeah. Uh, for me, it is. Yeah. Tomato, yeah. tomato. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Well, I job uh -huh. with all that. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. And, and we could say a searcher, well, like, when I look at those two words, a searcher is more like, oh, I got to find it, I got to find it, whereas seeker is more like, 
I'm just thinking like a little less. Um, yes. The word I want to say, anal about it. <laughs> right. I, I have a very close friend that is, uh, I forget for lack of a better, a baby witch. And she's always asking questions and sending me things and everything. And that's just what I try to tell is, what does it say to you? You know, does it speak to you? Because if it does, then obviously you need it. But if it doesn't, throw it away. Mm -hmm. You know, read everything you can read. Ask as many questions as you need to. But if it does not fit you, then just let it go. And don't stress over it. Because if you've got to stress over it, then obviously it's not something that you need to be chasing after. Right. And, and sometimes those things will circle back around later. Mm -hmm. And and it, and and so the, the fact that you kind of explored it or saw it a little bit earlier, but it wasn't the time. Correct. And, but it'll come back later. But but I love that, Morgana. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Emily, you want to say something? When we're going to be talking about the women in history, the people that y'all have on your list, do you feel that they um, were more in the hip? Were they? Yeah, I, I think for me personally, um, because of women's, and I hate to say this, but women's place that they have had to kind of stay more hidden because, you know, until the last, you know, half century, you know, women were told they had a certain place and that that's where they need to stay. So, you know, in the 50s, 60s, when people started opening up more is when you really started seeing them come out. But even then, it was a slow process. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was younger searching and everything even when I got to a place where I could access the information I still found one female for every 50 males you know mm -hmm. so yeah like I said it's it was very difficult to find those people and then you know there are people I'm so glad I found at that point in time but now I've, I've kind of outgrown you know yes but Morgana, you had said, um, well, well, it being more secretive, they being more secretive, they uh, women being, uh, you could find less women in history compared to the amount of men you found. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that that's their place in society. Um, I think, ooh, I just think fear is wrapped all around that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, even, you know, the the earliest uh, parts of church, I mean, who was it? It was, um, give me one second, and I'll remember her name. No, but no. Um, she was actually uh, stoned to death by early Christians because it was a woman who was talking philosophy and things like that. You know, I mean, it was just so unheard of for a woman to have that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was that in the second or third century I uh, think so I'm trying to remember if I'm, I'm seeing if I can find her name I can't remember it for right now I keep wanting to say Hypatia but I, I don't think that's it I don't know if I've, I've heard heard that story but um there were probably um many stories like that that we don't even know <laughs> right it's right yeah. And, you know, um, I also was thinking, I was trying to define uh, metaphysical and, and how we wanted to, um, I learned a lot of words that I'd never heard of guys researching this. <laughs> okay. So I think, I think personally for me, theocentric metaphysics is, mm -hmm. is what, what I jive with. Um, I, I love everything metaphysical that has has to do having your own relationship with God so um that is probably who I am going to be bringing in of this discussion so just y'all know kind of where I'm coming from but I'm excited to hear what each of you are going to bring in your own wheelhouse as far as <laughs> metaphysics come Hadley 
what kind of uh, women stood out to you when you find and look for your inspiration? Who are these women? Well, when, when I was researching the topic for, for this discussion, I was drawn more to like the, the warrior queens, the prophets and the seers. Yeah. And that's really where I found a lot of, um, yeah. because the women were so hidden away just the day to day but then you have these phenomenal women like Bodica or I think it was um Queen Tamar she was a warrior queen of Georgia um in Eastern Europe or Asia but um mm -hmm. again pagan queens when women could be but at the same time they really had to fight for their right too and oftentimes it was passed down through a husband Yes, yes. Oh, another way, uh, another name that I've, I thought connected with this was Mary. She wrote Frankenstein. Mary oh, Shelley. Mary Shelley. Shelley. Yes. Mary Shelley. Oh, oh my gosh, I didn't think about her, but yeah. Um, I, I thought about like okay. Jean Dixon. So who was it that was the Reagan's astrologist? Oh, because they didn't uh, make a move. They didn't make a move without consulting her. And this yeah, is her name's Joan Quigley, and I actually have a quote um, from his memoir. For the record, Don mm -hmm. Regan complained how virtually every major move and decisions that the Reagans made during his time as White House Chief of Staff was cleared in advance with this woman in San Francisco who drew up horoscopes to make certain that the planets were in favorable alignment for the enterprise. Wow. And that, that just, cause we think about the Reagan era and I mean, people still, that's like the last time when, you know, the, the U S was really in a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you think about how strategic they were at having that done all with this little psychic medium over <laughs> drawing her astrology wow. charts. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, um, you know, I bet if, if we took a deep dive into the wives of presidents, <laughs> I bet we would find a lot of it that, that they, well, we all know Eleanor Roosevelt. She was a strong figure, but I remember, uh, I think it was a documentary on history channel or, or something, uh, talking about Abraham Lincoln and, and his wife was, that was, you know, right when the spiritual spiritualist movement was getting going. And his wife was like, all into, you know, if I, y'all probably know more about that than I do. I just heard it on the documentary, but, um, of course, I would think that a lot of, you know, not not to downplay the, the role and responsibility of the the male president, but I'm sure we would all agree that their wives had a big hand in in their leadership and their decision making. Yes, absolutely. That they were advisors to these presidents. Oh. Another one that I found interesting in regards to this topic was Marie Laveau. Yes. Um, during her time, in, she was, you know, born a free black woman in New Orleans in the mid what, 1700s. Yes. And yes. people came to her of all color for cures and advice. Mm -hmm. She, you know, attended mass religiously, yet she was a voodoo priestess at the same time and practiced the magical arts. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's a very interesting character. I mean, yes. just, it, 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 the, the, the stuff that you know is real and the stuff you question, it's all interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, and it was Hypatia that um, she was, um, she, she did philosophy, she did mathematics and everything. Um, she also studied astronom astronomy, you know, um, and back then, of course, you know, they still followed astrology and things like that also. But uh, she was very, very uh, tolerant towards Christianity when they started coming in, you know, to their, their place and mm -hmm. was eventually brutally murdered for being a female in that place. Oh. I mean, well, the thing is, it was the Christians who killed her. 
Oh, and yes, it was the Christians okay. that killed her because of the place she held, because in her society, she was treated with respect for being an intellectual. But then mm -hmm. they started, uh, you know, moving it in with uh, the, the Christians started moving into Alexandria and uh, mm -hmm. the bishops led a charge to take her down and she was beaten in the streets and killed, you know, yeah. just because she was a female of intellect. You know, mm -hmm. and, and she was able to influence people and everything. So they felt like, you know, I guess too much. She was a threat. That's she was right. a threat. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so. another another strong figure is um, Catherine de Medici. Mm -hmm. You know, she was very well known for being into a lot of alchemy. She was known as, uh, what was it, for poisoning people? Uh-huh. Yep. She yeah. was a queen of France, but she came from a powerful um, Medici family in Italy that um, were very much well-known alchemists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. And uh, Catherine the Great was also another one that was very powerful and that uh, had astronomers telling her, you know, what she needed to you know to lead as well as she did. Um, I know that um, the last Tsarina uh, that was married to Alexander had Rasputin. You know, um, I was thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so so, so many I, of them. Alexandria was that her name? No, no. Uh, Am I his wrong? name was Alexander. Um, it was a that was Alexandra, and he was Nicholas. Got yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. So gotcha. yeah, Alexandra, that's correct. But, Am uh, I remembering correctly? And y'all tell because I know for some reason Queen Victoria is popping in my mind. I know she Queen was Victoria, very Victoria after Albert died was very into the spiritualist movement. That's what I thought that was where she came to wear black. Her black her black clothes came from. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And as that's just so confounding to me because she was such a stickler to the church. Yes. But then when he passed away, she loved him so much she couldn't let go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely a... you know i mean it's it's amazing what what the loss of a loved one actually can push that sometimes i think because up until my father died i was pretty much up by myself you know and, and everything i did and searched for and everything was just as as a single person and after i lost him is when i started branching out and trying to find other people because i didn't have him to talk to anymore about these things so Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah you know so and i, I think, see that i was gonna say after after a significant person dies though like you were just saying it also opens you up to want to mm -hmm. um if you had not really ever thought of things before the death to start thinking outside of this today's reality of what you know mm -hmm. right the, the thought of afterlife or what is the point of life <laughs> yeah. is, is gone and absent. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that I found um, interesting is that most of the women who were very heavily associated either with um, some sort of metaphysical thing were accused of witchcraft and often killed. Yes. You had mm -hmm. Joan of Arc, you had she was on um, my list, yes. <laughs> Anne Boleyn. Um, mm -hmm. I think there was another queen, one of the the white, one of the white rose queens of England. I know you think of her name. I don't remember her name though. Is it? It was the mother of Henry, was it? Mm. I it wasn't remember. Elizabeth. It wasn't. I don't think it was Elizabeth. It was. It might have been the original. The the white rose elizabeth okay maybe so it might have been her that queen that queen elizabeth the first was named after but she wasn't mm -hmm. she, she was a york queen i think i can't remember i can't keep up with all all the the names because they recycle them yeah, but yeah. she was a witch um i'm trying to think oh gosh but yeah there's so many and it just um 
again, anytime any woman has power, historically, they're robbed of it, made out to be um, basically slut-shamed in many instances, and turned into a witch, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when that and that's that's why I don't like to use the word witch for myself and I know a lot of people are like oh we're we're trying to take it back and become empowered but it just has such negative connotations oh yeah Mm -hmm. but um the wise women though the if you look back as far back as there have been tribes of man there's usually a very strong female center of the tribe Mm -hmm. and that's who they turn to for wisdom and guidance Mm -hmm. and it's and it's because the mother was the root of the family while the father was out hunting and gathering right you know the men didn't have the longevity that the the women did in these tribes because they were putting themselves in harm's way to hunt and gather and Mm -hmm. war Mm-hmm. Yeah, when when I was doing my research, um, I, I like I said my my book of choice is the Bible. My I do have uh, my my um, source or power I, is God. I so when I was preparing for this and I was asking for guidance, um, uh a word stuck out to me it was called dying a mystical death and that to me is when you get to a point in your where you're acknowledging a spirituality that you're going to die to the self and allow the powers that be to come in and work through you empty yourself yield yourself to where you're going to serve with loss of fear you lose the fear and what i see all these women you're talking about that were hunted down they served fearlessly because they had a mystical death of i'm dying to self and i'm going to serve my source like i said my choice of word is god but it could be any you know i'm not labeling it for anybody Yeah, I was going to ask, and maybe this isn't a fair question or assumption to make, but do y'all think in some ways it's easier for women to do that because we've already had to die to self, deny self so much in the society already? Like, self, not that we should be self-sacrificing, but but like to be able to turn over, to be able to release release our power over something is actually very powerful that we don't have to hold on to power i don't know i'm i feel like i'm child, i know what i'm trying to say but it's how birth in anymore. itself is your releasing yourself you've given up your body to house this other being so it's just like we are just primed to be it's able like we to give up power and our giving up power actually is powerful that, that, that we give up our body to give birth, whether it's figuratively or spiritually um, and, and, um, or literally. And, but that is, but yet we have the power to give birth. I don't know. What do y'all think? Or am I just rambling? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I can see that. I mean, you know, because like I said, you, and if you look back through history, and this is one thing that that draws me, I think, to the pantheons that I am is women were revered. You know, they weren't subservient. And like I said, I was very lucky in that I was taught, even as a female, you can do or be whatever you want to be and don't ever let anyone tell you differently. So letting go of control is very difficult for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> But, but I feel like, you know, that as things have gone on and, and society turned the way it did, that, you know, women were primed to be subservient and being able to take that power back is, you know, huge. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we were not brought up that way. Mm-hmm. We were not told you could be whatever you want, you know. We, right. 
it, it, we were not encouraged to be autonomous and successful and and um but that's something we found later in life we, we've had to to um uh, and try to embrace that become that these people who we can look up to were not perfect people at all but they chose to go against the the mainstream the norm and look at the legacy that they have left i remember when i first started searching when i was you know in my teens and everything uh the one person or one of the two people that i could find was um helena bavlotsky uh that founded the theosophical movement you know and uh dion fortune i mean so like i said you know they at that time that's what I could find and what I needed to say, okay, it's okay to step outside of what you've been taught is normal. But then as I got older and had more resources and, you know, followed my heart, they're not for me, but they still had an influence on who I am and the way that I chose to walk. Right. I mean, right. so, so, you know, like I said, we do outgrow some things, you know, um, and that's, you know, that's with anything. I mean, there are just things that, you know, serve you wonderfully at some point in your life and eventually they don't serve you anymore. No, that um, well, there's so many different types of women mm -hmm. that we we're talking about. I mean, you have just, for, it, it's not limited to your religion. No. It's not limited to a certain ability. But it's the fact that these women, I guess it's the great sacrifice you would say and that they made themselves targets by putting it out there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I know like Esther Hicks is one that I think of when I think of. Um, That's on my great. list. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's just, you know, she, and, and also, um, Miss Takata, the woman who brought Reiki to the Western world, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got a, a number and it's just women who were being true to their calling. other women. Yeah. What? The other women. Yeah, I mean, well, that's, yeah, I, I, that's one that I totally fell in with as I got older was Laurie Cabot. And um, back when uh, the movie, the witches of Eastwick came out, she actually uh, established the Witches League of Public Awareness to counter all the false information that that movie gave to people about modern witches. You know, mm. so like I said, you know, I mean, it, before that she was very obscure. People didn't know who she was. So she put herself on the line just to, you know, bring this back in, you know, to separate, no, we're not Satanists. You know, we, we have nothing to do with that. This is what we are. So I just, you know, yeah, it's amazing who she was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do you think it's, it's, do you think it's a time or maybe it's just a personal decision, decision for some reason, veil and unveiling is just uh, uh, as a target words for me today. As women, I feel called in my life that I'm to unveil, mm -hmm. unveil my beliefs, unveil, uh, but do you think we still need as women to be veiled in, you know, our spiritual practices? Um, I, I think that that is an individual decision. Um, I was asked a couple of years ago, I wear most of the time um, a triple moon pendant that my husband gave me for an anniversary years ago. And I have earrings that have moons on them also. And I actually had someone that had just started working with this that came up and says, hey, are you a witch? And I'm like, well, it depends on how you look at it. He goes, me too. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, cool. And he goes, but I see you wear that. And I'm like, why wouldn't I wear that? Oh, no, you can't wear that in public. 
well, I'm not going to hide who I am. You know, I'm not going to go up to people and introduce myself. Hi, I'm a pagan. What's your name? You know, right. but, yeah. it, you know, I'm not going to hide who I am or lie about who I am to make someone else comfortable. You know, uh -huh. um, I'm very close to the person I work for. And, you know, we have differences in what we believe. And politically, we are worlds apart, but we just don't talk about those things. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I said, we've got a very good relationship. I consider her a friend and we just know there are some subjects we're not going to discuss, even though she does believe in Bigfoot. So I think she's on the fence there, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> There's no, no right. So, so, I, that, so to answer that, yes, I, I think it is, if you feel that that's the place that you are, then you definitely need to follow that. You know, whereas there are some people who, for whatever reason, you know, whether it's their uh, family or, you know, their spouse, um, you know, I have a close friend that she went to several events with me, you know, for the pagan community back years ago, and he just had a meltdown about it because, oh my God, we're going to all go to hell because she's doing this stuff, yeah. you know, so she felt like she couldn't be open. So, I think yeah. that with so, each person it's an individual uh -huh. and it may be a case-by-case case thing like you know certain and, thing you know I need to no thank you for clarifying that because that helps me see that I need to be a little more spiritually discerning or whatever the word is and that there's appropriate time to be veiled and an appropriate time to be unveiled so I just need to be careful and I'm a newbie in all this and don't have a little more experience. Well, one thing. of my friends, um, she was a reclaiming witch from New from Chicago. And she had moved down here and her philosophy was she let everybody know because if they met her and she was this very cute, adorable little blonde girl, and she said, you know, if somebody here asked me my religion and I tell them then they're going to think well you know I know a witch and she's okay right and that was her her you know stance on it but mm -hmm. for me you know I'm it's complicated <laughs> you know <laughs> right, um, right. And I, I wasn't yeah well no I'm just I'm just saying you know there are people who I'm very open with and then there are people who I will never tell but these are not people I'm going to invite to my house anyway Right. Yeah, you know, but with the people who know me and I'm close to, they all know. Mm -hmm. And there's people who, if they asked, I'd tell them. But there's other people that I just don't feel like they have a right to a window inside my life. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, well know, even where, where I am, I mean, you know, I'm putting myself out there big time, and I and I'm not proclaiming myself as a, a witch I mean I or anything like that I don't really have a label per se but um even though I'm on this public platform now in my day-to-day -day life I, I just I don't advertise it if anybody asks I'll tell them but I don't go around advertising mm -hmm. right. what, what, what I do well, um, in my experience, most people don't want to know. Most people want you to tell you what they want, what they want to hear. Yes. Where do you go to church what? is the first thing when you move out of state to a place like Mississippi or Louisiana or Alabama, or Arkansas, yeah. or even Tennessee, <laughs> the first thing they're going to ask you is where you go to church at. Mm -hmm. And I have I had a, a lady that I was friends with that had moved here from New York and she's like, People don't ask that anywhere else. I've lived all over the world. People don't ask that. <laughs> right, and because religion should be a very personal thing. It should be, but yeah. not not necessarily here. Okay. And um, so it's like I said, it's complicated. It's a it's a personal choice, and people assume that it is their. Uh -huh place to right to <laughs> well i mean i i i am a a 50 year old woman with no children so i've heard had a lot of inappropriate things said to me over the years mm -hmm. but people in the south 
and I, I just say that but I don't I think it's just people probably everywhere they just think that is their business to mind yours mm -hmm. and it's not yeah. you know mm -hmm. but we're so polite we don't know how to say that's none of your business right. you know yeah. we don't want to hurt say. nobody's feelings come on <laughs> Well, that's a, but back before I worked where I'm at now, I mean, so it's been, you know, 16, 17 years ago, uh, I was at dinner, my husband and myself with my boss and her husband. And uh, I said something about, oh, God help you. And she goes, see, I told them you weren't an atheist. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so evidently my whole team had decided that I was atheist. And I'm like, no, I'm not atheist. She goes, okay, so you're a Christian. I said, we're just going to call me non-denominational and change the subject. Right. And that's because where we left it. Because sometimes the compassionate thing is to not go there. Mm -hmm. it, you know, to, if we're constantly stirring the pot, that's really not helping. You know, we should stand up for ourselves and, and, and where the, the environment is conducive to, to taking that veil off but we take it off but but veils are important i mean sometimes we need to shield ourselves sometimes we need veils protect us from the the elements the sun the wind the rain the sand so i don't think we throw our veil off to the side and I, you know what it is it's that that it's the it's the what's the it's coming through of like you know share that it's the apostolizing that's coming out in me I apologize I just realized that that was just you know that's what I was groomed in <laughs> so that so yeah I do need to bail myself a little more oh my goodness well you know and, and it does go both ways like I said I'm very close to my boss but I had a manager back about I don't know, it's been about 13 years ago that got ticked off at me and sent her a message and told her that I had a voodoo doll, that the entire department was scared of me, and that one of the girls thought that I had put a curse on them because of the voodoo doll. What he didn't realize is the one he said was scared of me and thought that I'd put a curse because of the voodoo doll bought me the voodoo doll. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, and he was just trying to, you know, get her on his side and off mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I can proudly say I'm still there and he's gone. But, you know, it's just, and, and this was the same person who asked me to draw up his daughter's natal charts and asked me to do whatever I did to make sure his ex didn't get custody. I mean, so he believed in all of these things, but then turned around and tried to use it against me. Mm -hmm. well and that's why it, i mean when i looked at the material that i came up with that was what i just in a lot of cases like i said you know it's all it's all fun and games until you're scared of her and then she's a witch and you want to burn her mm -hmm. yeah. and so how many women throughout history were metaphysically minded and living you know a righteous life um helping other people he as a healer as a wise yeah, woman at the yeah. village and then they get labeled when a group of men or you know even a, a other a jealous woman a vindictive woman yeah yeah, yeah points the finger right. and starts raising all this um fear suspicions and that yeah yeah because wasn't that mm -hmm. what happened at the Salem witch trials? I mean, yeah, I we've seen are. that happen time and time again. And I mean, as I'm sure y'all know that they would put these women in water. And if you floated, you were a witch. If you drowned, oh, well, you weren't a yeah. witch. Oh, heck, we messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that's what women have been dealing with and that's part of you know it doesn't go away it's part of who we are and that suspicion that we have and that need to be private about things mm -hmm. because you know it's 
Gracie and I did a show about psychics in governments it dating it became a historical piece because we, the further we went back we just kept finding you know there were there were psychics and seers and prophets all the way back oh yeah because um, Hitler had him a couple of well he had a lot of a lot of well but, I mean we're I'm talking like you know the oracle at Delphi and yeah, and yeah. Go, going back you know historically these people have always been around so it's mm -hmm. not that um all of a sudden people were afraid of witches it became that people who were psychic or had gifts or intuitions or healing abilities they were kind of afraid to own up to them after people started getting burned and drowned and well, tarred that, and feather over stuff you know that's uh, even if you go back to the history of the king james bible the original latin of the suffer not a witch to live was suffer not a demon to live. But King James was so terrified that witches were going to curse him that that was changed out for witch in the King James Bible. Mm. You know, so like I said, you know, I mean, it's just another one of those labels that, you know, like you say, somebody gets angry, you know, oh, she wouldn't give me a love potion. So I'm going to tell my husband she put a curse on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. well and and i don't mean to make this about witches because it's, it's not because to me witches is what women are called when they go against society mm -hmm. what the what's popular you become a witch and you become an ugly hag and you become this thing that's not necessarily based in truth right mm -hmm. yeah. and we see so many women that have been demonized for lack of again a better term um because of this but it's often it's she okay so she wouldn't do a, a love spell well that's you can't make somebody love somebody correct so she that goes ethical. against the free will it's mm -hmm. unethical so this mm -hmm. witch and i'm using air quotes here y'all yes. can't see them but i did them um <laughs> <laughs> you've got this whole power struggle and again it's you i couldn't make this lady do this and make this person love me therefore i'm going to ruin her you know i'm mm -hmm. going to cast a stone at her i'm going to show her what she wouldn't do for me you know and people it's it's all based in these emotions these ugly mean emotions that make us human mm -hmm. you know well, and you know, anytime you see, you know, or the majority of the time when you see a depiction of a witch, it's the long nose with the ward on the end of it and the green skin, you know. So, yeah, it is an insult as much as anything. Yes. You know, well, it's, it's no different than the bastardization that we saw of the African American people during the, the slavery. Yeah. You know, you're right. But yep. people forget. I mean, women are still fighting this battle. Yeah. You know, we still are. We still don't get equal pay. We still don't get the same treatment. And as much as people try to combat it, it's still still there. Yes. I mean, well, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, you remember recently. Um, and this was a, a, a conversation we had amongst the the powers that be over at weird realities is that i can ask a question and i can have one of the guys ask the same question and they will get a response where i won't mm -hmm. and it's because they're a male and they're doing mm -hmm. the asking and mm -hmm. their voice is heard more quickly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it could be the same question. And this, bless his heart, the person I was talking with about this was like, well, no, that's not true. And we, we argued back and forth about it. And I said, it is. And I said, I'm not, I'm not saying this to be ugly. It's, I not, said, his, but this, it's not his fault. It's just. Yeah. And I, I'm like, you know, it's, it's, this is just society. Society is just still this way. And he goes, well, I guess I hate that it's like that. And I said, well, you can do that all day long. I said, mm -hmm. but it just is. I said, I hope for the next generation of women, it's easier, but I don't know that it is because we see policies and, and things that are out there that, 
you know, take away our right to be women. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I started a huge argument over the statement maybe instead of teaching our daughters to watch what they wear and watch where they go, we need to teach our sons not to rape. And holy shit. And they're like, how can you say that? We know. I said, okay, no, if we knew, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I said, but I taught my son it's not okay. You know, I taught my son what consent was. I said, so obviously there is still an issue if we're still telling girls where they should go and what they should wear to prevent themselves from getting raped. You know, I, yes. mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I had a lot of issues with, with um, doctrine and theology in, in the different Christian churches I was in. Um, but the straw that broke the camel's back for me was a sermon. And they didn't come right out and say it, but the way I interpreted what was being said was that it was the woman's responsibility to keep her man faithful. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. There was already a lot of things I was disagreeing with from the pulpit. But when that came out, I was like, I'm done. You have so many different interpretations of the Bible, and there have been so many. And let, let's start at the beginning. There have been incredible differences in the translations of the Bible when it went from the original text to the King James Version to um, what is it? All different versions. Which was have. which was King Henry's version? The Anglican church is that the king james version anyway i mean and then you have the men who are preaching to you their interpretation of what those words mean because i mean let's face it things aren't in favor of women as they should be in the south but when i was in north carolina i went to a church there for my stepson's baptism and the all, only thing I heard was how subservient women should be and I thought to myself I'm gonna turn I'm gonna burst into flames being here <laughs> because this goes against everything that I believe you know it goes against everything I believe is women are not subservient to men we are the life bringers we create life and um Being the nurturer I, I, you know i think that's and, and men are nurturing too so it's not it's not that's not even a male or female thing but it's like the divine feminine is a nurturing spirit but 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 nurturing being a nurturer and being subservient it's not the same thing and i think that um yeah, anyway. I just... oh, no, I, I'm, I'm a total mother. If, if you're around me for any length of time, at some point, I'm going to play mother to you. I'm a cancer through and through. So, <laughs> but I also believe in hard, tough love, you know, when someone gets to a certain point. So yes, I do believe that subservient and nurturing are two totally different things because you know, and I believe it can be both but I don't think that they are hand in hand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah you know when when I met my uh, uh, spouse my thing is I wanted a partner not not a husband you know not not uh, an owner not uh, another father you know I went from like I said my father to you're either going to treat me like I need to be treated or we don't have to be together and it's worked out great, but I know for a lot of people it doesn't, you know, and you have to either decide whether or not that's the life you want for yourself or move on. But, you know, I know that not everybody can easily make those choices either. I kind of made a big deal. I, I kind of laugh at myself now. Um, but when my husband and I, we've been together for over 30 years, um, I made a, di a big deal about I was not going to say that I would be obedient. And he was fine with that. But it was just like, why are you making such a big deal about it? I was like, because it was important to me. Because growing up, that's what we were taught. You were to be obedient to your husband. It's like, I love you. 
but I can't promise I'm going to be obedient. And he never asked me to, but he doesn't understand why I was making such a big deal out of us. Cause I was like, because if I say I'm going to do something, I, I want to keep my word. Uh, I've had to re I've had to uncondition what marriage is to me or redefine it now as I'm growing older at 50 of what I'll put up with and what I won't put up with. It just it's a big difference than what you put up with at 20, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and that um, you know, whether or not that that I knew the terms of our relationship had changed. Mm-hmm. Now it cannot be the same as it was, like you said, when I was in marriage years. that happens. Even good marriages, I- any relationship, things change. And if you you can't base you know, friendship, your relationship with your parents, your your children, things change, relationships change. And um Well, the relationship doesn't, you do. I'm sorry, not that I'm trying to correct you, but you know yeah, what I mean? Fine. Because yeah. we, you grow, you either grow together or you grow apart. And right, right. you can make an effort to stay with someone if you're growing in a different direction. But it's like that vibration, man. Once you reach a certain vibration, you either, your partner has to level up or you got to go your separate ways. Mm-hmm. Because they they will never, if they're not willing to at least be open to what you're into, they'll never accept you and that that's not worth it you know so Mm -hmm. with with the women in history that y'all have because um were were these women were all these women uh did they have the support of a, a male counterpart part or were they solo it just depends at all well i know you um, know, uh, hypatia that we talked about earlier that yeah. was was killed by christians her brother is the person who supported her education and everything so she did have someone in her own you know family that supported her it was outsiders that had the problem with who and what she was yeah, yeah. cleopatra was one of the most educated women of her time mm-hmm. I, I was gonna mention her um esther hicks who's a you know she's still alive but um her husband passed away but but her husband was a big supporter for her i think dolores cannon dolores cannon was on my list of of somebody who i for me personally felt like she brought something to the table um and then yeah she had a i think she had a spouse uh now, Joan of Arc, well, uh, do y'all remember much about her her history? I took a deep dive with her a couple of years ago, but I don't remember all the details. I don't um, think she was married. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. And wasn't she about 16 when she was killed? Yeah, she was yeah. very young. Um, young. Uh, but I'm trying to remember her childhood, her family. Um, but there are men that supported her, or she mm-hmm. wouldn't have gotten to where she was. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and That's I mean, exactly with right. Bodica, you had her husband die, and uh, with Queen Tamar, I think it was the same. I think that her husband died, and but she had support of other clan leaders because she was such a strong leader. And the same with Bodica. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's not typical, I would say. You know. Yeah. And and this as when you get fr- closer to our timeline is when it got worse. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean because like I say you know it's it's it seems like in so many ways now we are going backwards. All right. Well guys, does anybody have any other um anybody else they want to share about metaphysical <laughs> I feel like we only touched the top of the uh, top tier of where we could have gone with this. I know. Because there are so many, and especially just in the last century, you know, women that were actually more open with their spirituality. Uh, There, you know, some of the churches started letting women be ministers during Mm -hmm. the last century and stuff. So, And we we didn't even address Starhawk. 
No, I know. I can't believe that. I mean, <laughs> that. Most, I'm sitting here looking at five books on my shelf by her. Starhawk <laughs> is the lady who started the reclaiming witchcraft mm -hmm. uh, movement, which okay. it is about reclaiming the name of witch, but it's also a very deeply ingrained in environmentalism, mm -hmm. um, religious. Yes, uh, she's and she's very awesome. feminist. She's very goddess oriented you know or, or like you say claiming that that grand feminine mm -hmm. that was so lost divine divine yeah. feminine there you go yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Um, so, we so, could have yeah. just done an hour and a half on her yeah she's yeah. amazing yes yeah, she is have to do she that. did the spiral dance which mm -hmm. emily read the yeah. spiral dance that's a book that, that I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you read. I think that it'll really mean oh, a lot to you. Starhawk mm -hmm. is her name in Spiral Dance. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think yeah. that was the first book I read by her. And uh, uh, what's her name? Gail Norn. Uh, what's our, Yasmin Gail Norn was another one that was really Silver Raven Wolf. Yep. 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 I've got so, this piece of paper with names all over it. So for, for <laughs> me, the main purpose or focus of this podcast I would like for our listeners is that just to uh, explore some of these people, some of these women that we discussed and and then go down your own rabbit holes with, with, <laughs> with, with, with all these different women who who have um not not to diss the men no great, not at all men out there but we, but we just haven't been um we just want to give a little shout out to them with it being march being women in history month um and and a lot of them have were kept in the shadows we're we're in the background um but i got another one pocahontas oh my gosh yes the po that's one thing I was going to say about the men when you start looking at tribal cultures and clans and and things like that from the Scottish Highlands to the American grasslands that's where you need to really look because with the Native American tribal system there was so much of a balance between male and female you mm -hmm. know the shared responsibilities and duties yes mm -hmm. living Absolutely. with one with the land right and things were passed down through the woman rather than mm -hmm. yeah you know, the clan name is well, from the woman not the man yes that's kind of cool mm -hmm. yeah we had our place and i don't know that we'll see it in my lifetime but you know i'd like to see us back in that same place again well in judaism you know it's passed down your faith is passed down through your mother yes it is because um there was so much rape within the cultures back in the beginning that mm -hmm. um sorry if i think my alexa just went off um that a father was who raised a child not necessarily who impregnated the mother mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i yes. think that's very important to re to remember yeah mm -hmm. oh, yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. So yes, there's right. still strong women. Yes, yes. Well, girls, this has been fun. It has. Thank, thank y'all so much. And Morgana, thank you for making your debut. Yes, <laughs> no, I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this was enjoyed wonderful. it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wealth well, of information. Yes. All right. We'll we'll see y'all later. All right. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent.